Hey guys, Miles here, and today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of working with the art program that I use for my digital artwork. It is a completely free program called Krita, and I'll show you how to download it and then use most of its basic features. Now I say basic because I'm still relatively new to using the program as a whole, so I'll just be showing you enough to get you started using it and experimenting with its features. Then, before the video ends, I'll show you how I take a beginning sketch and turn it into the finished piece that I upload on DeviantArt. So, let's get started! So what you're going to do if you don't already have the program is you're going to go to whatever search engine you're using and type krita.org. It's going to be, well for me, it's the second option here. And then you're just going to click on that. This is going to take you to the official website. Um, and then you're going to click download. And then this is where it's going to tell you um, how you're going to download the program. Again, like I said, it's completely free. And I believe it works on both Mac and Windows, but for those of you who are using Mac, this was my alternative to using Paint Tool SAI, and I can't have that on a Mac. I've been told they're pretty similar and they have a lot of the same features, so if you're familiar with that one and you're trying out another program, this is also another great program that gives you, like I said, some of the same um, features to use. So after you download it from here, um, it will walk you through the steps if you're on a Mac, if you're on a Windows. I think it's a little bit different, but I don't know because I've only ever had a Mac. But after you download it, um, it's going to, you're going to want to open it and pull it up. So I'm going to switch screens here for a second. So for me, it's a little bit different because I have used the program before. And for you, it's going to be set up like you haven't used it before. So for me, it's um, recovering all the files that I've used before. You can see a few different art projects here. Um, and it's just showing me that if I wanted to, I could pull those back up. So I'm just going to say cancel. And this is what usually comes up. This lets you know you're ready to start your art. It's just going to give you all of the information about the program. And you're going to close that. Then I'm going to click File, New. And this is going to come up, this little window here. And this is really important because this tells you about the canvas you're working with, the image size, and other um, specifications of the project. But for right now, since we're just doing the basics, you're only going to need to look at a few of these categories. So we're going to keep it really simple. So here you can name your project. I'm just going to name it Let's see, test one, Oop. test one. Then here, this is gonna tell you what your canvas looks like. So I have it set kind of large because I like to work with um, pieces that are big enough that I can see them, that I can zoom in and look at fine details. So you're gonna see my canvas is set a little bit high or a, or a little bit large, um, but you can change this however you want. So here's the width and the height and the resolution of the canvas that you're working with. So after I've got all that down here, I found that the only other thing you really need to look at if you're planning on doing something else here is below this bar. But if you're just making a piece of artwork and this is just something you're beginning and you don't know where you're taking the project yet, this custom document here at the top is going to be your best option. So I'm going to click create. Now that is going to give me my canvas as you can see here and there are going to be two layers. So you've got this layer, layer one, and this is going to be your base layer and it's already set to white. So it is a white canvas. And then this is your second layer. And as you can see, there's like a little checker pattern. That just means that there is nothing on it. It's a vector layer. So if I draw something, that's all that exists on this layer. So back to the basics, this main area is going to be your canvas and there are a few shortcuts for navigating around it. The tool that you have right now is a hand, so you can drag the image. And for a Mac, if you click the plus button, it's going to make the canvas larger. If you click the minus button, it's going to make it smaller. And that works as many times as you want to use it. Bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. And that's going to be how you move around your canvas here. You can click and drag with the hand, or you can make it bigger or smaller with the buttons. Now, if you have a select area you want to go straight to over here on the side, this is going to be your other navigation tool, and this is just going to take you into whatever space you select. So, I'm going to tell you how to work with these layers over here, first and foremost, because this is almost the most important part. So usually when I start a project, I'm working with a vector, so I don't want this first layer. This white layer doesn't really mean very much to me. 
So I'm going to go down here to the very bottom to this little trash can here and I'm going to click the trash can. So that's going to delete the layer. So now all I'm working with is this layer. Right here in the corner is going to be all of your information about color tools and the brushes and layers that you have going and then options for those tools. So let's explore these layers for actually, you know what, I'm going to start with the layers page. Here is, it's going to show all of the layers that you currently have going. And since I only have one, that's the only one that appears here. But if we want to add another one, we can go down here to the very bottom of the page and click this little plus button and it will add us another layer right here. What you see me doing too as I toggle through here is clicking this on off button. So this little eye right here is going to say whether the layer is visible or not. So just to demonstrate that point, I will show you really quickly and I will come back to this so don't think you're missing anything. If I draw a badly shaped circle on layer 3 and then I go on to layer 2 and draw a baby badly shaped circle, if I toggle between the two of these I can make it so that there's just one or the other. So, with our layer here that we have, or this is the one that we're going to be working with, so then if we want to add more, you can add as many as you want. And that's going to just give you layer after layer after layer. Now, I personally work with quite a few large projects that have up to 40, 50 layers, um, and I haven't reached a point where they say you can't make any more layers. So, go completely wild. You can have just as many as you want, I believe. Um, I've never, like I said, I've never met a restriction, so don't be worried if your project has quite a few layers, it should be just fine. Alright, so with that being said, I'm going to switch over to this tab here, and this is going to be your brush presets tab. Now I know you can actually download more brushes, but I have never needed to download any more um, since the ones that they already give you preloaded seem to include quite a few different ones that I use all the time. So this is just going to show you all of the brushes you have at your disposal right now, from pencils to pens to actual paint brushes to markers, erasers, um, and even preset um, styles. I use quite a few of these to make <clears throat> certain effects look uh, more realistic. Now I can't say that I've used every one of these brushes, but I can show you a few of the ones that I do use on a regular basis, so you'll know just what you can use uh, right away without having to go through and look at all of them. So I'm going to show you the ones that I use most often when I am drawing or sketching. So up here, or this is actually, mm, I would say about the middle, maybe not. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's like six, six brushes in. This is the brush that I use when I am doing line work. So you can see it's a really nice and thin and it makes a nice line. Now the only thing that's kind of bad about this brush is if you go really fast it kind of dissimilates so it'll turn into a different shape. What you see happening here is that I drew something and the program almost fixed it because I have a smoothing effect on right now that will make my lines look a little bit more neat so when it sees a shape like this it's like no I don't like that and it turns it into something else. I will show you how to do that maybe later once we get into the more interesting um, parts of using this program. So after I've selected my brush, I can change the width of it up here. You'll see it says size and it goes, it starts at 1.00 and you can either toggle it up and down by the corner right here or you can just skip ahead if you know what size you want to be at. Um, and this is just going to change how large your brush stroke appears. So you can see, here we go. This brush is also really wonderful in that it creates really nice smooth lines and it will almost fan out a little bit. Um, much like if you were to sit down with pen and paper and try to recreate these effects. This is what is so cool about this program is it really does react to your brush strokes as if you're using the actual tool. So there is that. I'm gonna just clear this up for a second. And that's what you're going to use up here to change the size of what you're drawing. Now over here on the corner, I know I haven't spoken about this um, yet, is this is going to be, right here is going to be your tools for your lines in this first little section. So I'm just on the brush one right now, which is freedom to do whatever you do right there. Then there's also shaping tools. So I can do a straight line, I can do a square. 
this is one of the brushes that sometimes it doesn't appear when you're doing set shapes. So I will actually show you my second favorite brush is right under the first. And this is going to be just a, almost like a plain pen or maybe marker. I don't know. Maybe you guys, maybe you guys have an idea of what this looks like, but that is my second tool. And with that one, you can get really pristine shapes. <laughs> right there right here so there's your square your circle this is if you're extremely crafty and you decide to draw whatever shape you like you're just gonna click and make separate points so you click for your first point click for your second third fourth and then when you complete the shape you come around to the center this little shape uh, this little circle will appear and that completes the form you're making so that is how to use some of the shape tools at least the most basic of shape tools here. There's a few other ones that if you're feeling interested, you can play around with. Um, I don't use them on a regular basis because I just haven't needed to, but same rules basically apply. They're all different shaping tools that you can use in multiple ways, but we're not going to get into that because this is a basic video. The second area right here in the center is going to actually affect what you've drawn. So with this area, you're going to be able to resize or reshape whatever you've drawn on the canvas. So you can see I can take my brush stroke and I can make it larger, I can make it longer, I can shift it back and forth, you can do just about anything. So that's that first tool that's going to let you um, basically edit anything about what you've drawn. And then this one is just going to move its placement back and forth, up and down, wherever you want to move it, but it's not going to mess with anything else. This one here is going to allow you to crop your image. So whatever is inside these points will be there and whatever is outside will not. Simple as that. Then we're going to move to our second section down here. This is going to show you some extra little tools that I only use two of these on a regular basis, but you can definitely use quite a bit more. The first one is going to be your gradient tool. So you're going to want to switch to a brush that you can use that's going to be, um, that's going to cover the area. And then you can see up here is a little square. And this is where you can create different gradients that you can use on your project. Um, let me see if I can find an interesting one. Okay, here we go. So this is one of the ones I've saved. Um, you can make your own, but you can also select ones that you've used before. So you can see ones here that I've used in um, quite a few different projects that I've saved to use again. But let's say we're just creating a new one. So we're going to come down here to the bottom and click add. Then it's going to pull up this screen where you can create your custom gradient. We're going to call it YouTube and we're going to come down here you can click on either of these triangles so that one's already selected then you click this bar here and it'll allow you to select a different color you can add as many of these as you want and it's just going to allow you to shape what your gradient looks like so for me i'm just going to turn this color down here and this is going to be my custom gradient so when i close this and i hit this right here you are able to draw where you want your gradient to be and then it appears. Now, because I'm on the same layer, it's gonna cover up what I drew before, but if I want it on a layer behind what I've drawn, I'm gonna come down here and add another layer and then I'm gonna drag it to the bottom. And then right here, now that I'm on this separate layer, I'm going to drag it down and now it's behind. The next tool here is going to be your color selector tool. So I can go anywhere on my canvas and select the color that I want my brush to be. Now over here in the corner you're going to see these two little boxes on top of each other and the, that's going to be the colors that you've used before. So if I'm going to draw here, you'll see that color comes up in the corner. So if I have a project and I've had a color that I've used before and I want to remember what exactly that color was and I don't feel like selecting it, it sh will be over here. Um, and it'll, it'll stack quite a few of those before it starts trashing the ones at the bottom that you can just go back and select whatever color you had been using before. This tool here is our ever important paint bucket. So you can splash your color on any space that has a little bit of an outline. So you can see basically anything goes for the paint bucket tool. 
The only other tools that I end up using on um, a regular basis for shaping what I'm doing are these tools here, which allow you to only basically edit in that space. So it will only let me draw in that area. Now I don't use these ones as much, just like the other tools up there for shaping. You can do a circle, a square, and you can make your own shape, and that's what these four right here are. But what I normally do is I take this one, it looks kind of like a magic wand, and I use it to select the area that I'm working with. And as long as that area is on the same layer, it will allow you to select it. If I'm on this layer, it'll allow me to select that layer. And it's kind of choosy with gradients sometimes, so it will, it sees a lighter color here, so it's going, okay, I'm gonna omit that. If you get this and you're like, I'm so frustrated, I wanna be able to draw here and it won't let me, you can always use this tool right here. It looks like a half bean. And you can go along and say, I'm going to just draw right there and that's the space I wanna be doing my drawing. So if we were trying to draw only in the red down here, we can use this to basically just say where we want to be able to edit. And then that allows us to use that little space that it didn't want to use before. And that's just one of the many small little glitches that the program will sometimes um, throw at you. But usually if you know these tools well enough, you can kind of work around them. Now after you've selected an area like this and you are going, okay, I don't want to edit in this area anymore. Why won't this go away? I changed to a brush. That doesn't seem to work. I've decided to pick colors. It still doesn't work. All you have to do is, and I found this out um, <laughs> after quite a long time trying to figure it out on my own and not being able to find answers online, is if you switch to another tool, you just click once and it will get you right back to the canvas without any selected areas. So now I'm gonna move back here to my brush presets and I will show you, hold on, let me clear this up here. I will show you, I'm gonna delete both of those and if you have only a few on here and you delete all of them, it will just give you a fresh layer as a courtesy that has nothing on it. Um, so we're gonna go back here. So you already know one of my favorite tools here is this um, really thin line work brush. Um, but also on the same row is gonna be your primary eraser. Then, like I showed you before, this is one of the other markers that's good for drawing shapes. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of choppiness, so I don't use this one very often. Um, but there is that one. Then, up at the top, another one that I use for if I want feathery lines. This is good for shading, for shadows. Um, it's gonna be this one right up here at the top. It is number four over from the left, and it's gonna just give you a nice airbrushed look. Um, like I said, if you're gonna use this for shadows or for shading, that's one of my favorites. And then on the far left corner is gonna be your brush here. And this is gonna be like your feathered eraser. So you kind of have to have it a little bit large to let it feather correctly, but it will just kind of feather erase whatever you have here. And it works on anything. So it's really cool if you need like a more transparent look or you wanna just have certain parts erased and still allow it to look um, airbrushed so there is that let's go down here this one right here it's going to be again four over from the left underneath my um, thin line work brush and my marker and it's called a blurring light I think that's what that's what they have it down as blur light okay and what this is just going to do is it's going to smooth over certain effects. So you can see it kind of smoothing the edges here. Now this is one of the brushes that you'll notice at the bottom. It says loading freehand brush stroke. Because there is so much connected with using this, this brush, it takes a little while to load its transferred effect onto whatever you've drawn. So usually I just give it a little bit, let it load itself, but then it will... Um, kind of feather out whatever you have drawn on the canvas at that time and just give it a more neutral look. So again, if I use this for shading, I'll sometimes use this to blur the shading in with the shadows or blur it in with lines I've drawn. And it's very, very helpful and looks quite a bit more natural, honestly. Now down here, if we go a little bit lower, you're gonna see a lot of like, they look like little S's drawn here. And the cool thing about this is if you are, if you like to draw cartoons or manga, 
Um, this is going to give you a lot of different effects that are going to be styled over and over again that you don't have to worry about drawing um, yourself and trying to get it to look symmetrical or to have them all look the same. So here is one. There is a whole bunch, and like I said, I don't use them very often, but um, quite a few of them allow you to have interesting effects, and some of them don't seem to always show up for me, but I know there are definitely ones that will give you a drawn line of basically a tessellation that just continues of whatever style or shape that it is set to create. And it takes a little bit to load these sometimes, but they're definitely worth it because they look so cool behind, uh, like I said, behind comics, or I've used a lot of them for if I'm drawing furniture or carpet. Those are all really, really helpful. And that's just going to be right here. There's a handful of them, as well as a whole bunch of other pens and pencils and brushes. Again, these are the ones I use most often, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you, yeah, see, here it just loaded, so it's going to load over top of each other to make it look a little bit lighter, to fade it into what other things that I've, the other things that I have drawn here. So um, just like with the brush stroke that I did earlier, it will show you down here at the bottom when it's loading. Now again, there are only some brushes that are going to take a little bit to load here on the bottom, but most of the other brushes, um, especially the ones that I use on a regular basis, are not going to take any time to load, so it's not going to waste any of your time while you're waiting for an effect um, or something like that that you use very often to actually load itself. Most of the um, larger brushes, again, if you make any brush super large, it might take a little bit, um, depending on what brush you're using, for it to load onto the canvas. As you can see there, it just kind of fixed itself a little bit, um, but that's completely normal. Now, before I go into how you save your file and um, all the kind of finishing techniques that I use once I'm done with the project, I just wanted to point out a few of the glitches that I've noticed that don't really make too much sense, but are something that new artists, especially if you're new to using this program, probably need to know, um, just so you know how to work in this program most effectively. The one that I have found is if you have a lot of layers going and you decide to consecutively delete one, two, or even three of them. Um, without, say, drawing or moving the canvas or interrupting that motion of deleting them with another practice, like, I'm trying to explain it to the best I can. Like, let's say I was just to delete all three of these layers, one after the other, um, and I wasn't, say, deleting one layer and then coming over here and drawing some more, um, and then going back and deleting another layer. If I was to just delete them all in a row, sometimes that will cause the program to crash a little bit. Um, at least that's what I've found. And another thing is the program will also sometimes just shut down. You can be in the middle of drawing, you could be finishing your sketch, you could be um, importing something and it will just freak out and crash. So what I'm in the pro or what I'm in the habit of doing is coming up here to the very top, and then you can see there's two options here. They have the save as, and then they have just the save. So this is gonna bring me to the point of when I'm finished with the project, I'm gonna hit the save as. And then I'm gonna name the project, and I'm going to have that save it to the desktop where I can see it. Then during my project, as I'm going along, after I do large movements, like let's say I just finished a hair piece, or I just finished all my shading, I'm gonna come up here and just hit save, and then it automatically saves it to the file I already set to save to my desktop. So I can click it really quickly and it doesn't take me a lot of time, but I can save my document um, or my canvas frequently enough that it's not going to be an issue if the program were to crash. I'm not going to lose um, my work you know, as much as if I hadn't saved it over and over and over again. So when I'm going to save a document, um, just like I showed you before, I will go back and do it again. So we're going to hit save as to save our document here. It's going to give us options. I always save to my desktop so I can see exactly what is going to be there while I'm doing my artwork just to make sure that it's saved and I don't have to go into a folder. Um, so you can see my uh, one of my projects here, you can see I just uploaded my um, speed paint with January and Nova and so that file is right there on my desktop. And that brings us to this bottom area. Here you can see the name that we named our project and it is being saved as a Krita document. So basically what that means is that it's saving it as this project. So if we export this right now, if we sa or we save it, 
Um, I say export because I feel like this is more of like when you export a movie, this is the entire file as a whole. When we save this onto the desktop, it's going to save that project so we can pull it up and work on it and then save it again and it will go to the same file on the desktop. So this is great if you're saving your project because you're not finished with it. So let's say we are finished with it, right? We don't want it to be a CRUDA document anymore. These are all the options that are open to us at the moment. So there are a whole bunch in here to fit your needs. Um, I most often use the JPEG image or the PNG image. So this is going to be your vector image with the background completely blank. And that is one of the main ones I use all the time. So if I'm going to export this as a PNG image, you see it's going to change the very, very ending of this so I know what it is. And then I'm just going to change the name a little bit, and let's say this is my finished piece. So now I'm going to save that. And here it's going to give you um, final exporting options. You can change the compression, and you can use another few little features here. I don't, on a regular basis, uh, change any of this. I usually leave it on three, and then that's usually good. Then I'm just gonna come down here and press OK, and that is going to cause the full picture to appear on my desktop over here. And then you can pull it up, and it is gonna show you your full finished piece, just like we had it on the desktop. Now, you can um, notice here too, it is since we have this as a vector image, the background here, it looks white right now, but if I were to put it over another image, that white is actually a transparency. So, with the PNG option, you are going to get the clear background so you can put something else underneath it, or you can bring this project and um, import it on top of another project. So if you made a background, let's say you made a background that looked really cool and you wanted to import this on top of it, then you would have a double layered image with what you've worked on before and then something new. So you can put them together and play with them. Um, if I'm going to do a project like this, it's going to be um, one that I want to do separately to whatever background I'm making or whatever foreground I'm making just because there's so much in it. So I would export this like I just did um, and then I would import it into a new project so that it would all be together on one layer. So now hopefully that helps you to learn just a little bit more about Krita, how to work with it, how to use brushes, layers, and different effects. So now I'm going to show you kind of like my process when I'm creating a piece of artwork. And that process actually begins with this program, and this program is called Mischief. Now unlike Krita, it does not have very many options, and unlike Krita, if you want to use it really effectively, you have to buy the full version. Now I'm not saying that the full version isn't wonderful, but like I mentioned before, Krita doesn't have a limit of layers you can use. Meanwhile, Mischief does, so if your project is going to be a really large one, you definitely can't do it here. Also, if you notice, um, there aren't very many brushes to choose from. There are a few presets for each of them, but it doesn't really give you a wide array of brushes as well as with erasers. It's the same deal down here, you can see there's just not very many. So what I use this program for um, most commonly is just doing my very beginning sketches. And I do this in Mischief because Mischief is extremely simple in the fact that I can come in here and do a sketch and then when I'm ready to really go in depth I can um, export it from here and then import it into Krita and work on it there. So with this program you can do um, something that's called or you're able to access something called an endless canvas. And you can't really see it now, but let me just draw something real quick. So let's say here is my badly drawn circle once again. The endless canvas gives you the ability to zoom out as far as you want and then zoom in as close as you want. It does not matter. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And that is really cool, especially when you're sketching multiple ideas because then I can sketch over here and then drag myself over there. And it's just very, um, it's not as restrictive as if you have a canvas with a set size. So what I do when I come in here is I just get my base sketches going, I get the idea of what I want my character to look like, and then I do 
I sketch in my basic shapes and I do what I call kind of like bone building. So if I have a position that I want them to stand in, I'm just sketching where I want those, say, <laughs> bones. I'm, I'm putting quotations around this bones to be um, because this will then lead my continued sketch once I move this over to Krita. So I'm using a lot of shapes again. I'm trying to just do a rough estimate of what I think that I want this to look like. It does not have to be perfect because once I move it to Krita, I can change all that. I can start working with it and I can start fixing it, but for right now I'm just getting my rough sketch down so I know what it's going to look like. So that's basically how I start things. Um, and then what I'll usually do is I'll come in here and I'll just clean it up a bit so that I know what lines I'm going to be using when I transfer it over. And then I'm just going to make my lines a little bit more defined, again, so I know what I'm using when I move it over to the next program. And this just helps out um, a little bit because the less sketch lines, the better, and the easier it is for you to define what it is you're drawing. So I will come in here and just erase the things that aren't important, at least to me at the moment. And then, when I'm finished with this, and again, you can get the free version of Mischief if you feel like you would love a starter art program and you just want to be able to sketch to your heart's content and you don't want to have a restricted canvas. Mischief is really great for that. And it's also, like I said, really great for these beginning sketches because there's no restrictions and it's just very simplified. So this is what I use more often than not. I try not to sketch in Krita just because I like the brushes here better for rough sketches and I like the brushes there better for finalized sketches. So here is my very rough first sketch of this pony that I'm going to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this image. And I know this isn't a mischief tutorial, but much like Krita, it gives you the PNG option so you can hide the paper background. Um, and export that. So, once that is exported, what I can do is, I can shrink this down here, we go back to our project here. I still have two layers to use, and I'm gonna delete those layers. This is our bottom layer of our background that we did earlier. I'm just gonna go up here, this is how you change the opacity. I don't know if I covered that, but let's say we have a back layer that we don't want to show so strongly, we can click up here at the opacity meter and we can dial it down a little bit. And this helps too when you're doing shading or shadowing and you don't want such a strong effect, especially if you're working with light, um, that that's really helpful. So I'm going to show you now how to import your image into Krita so that you can begin sketching. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to layer up here at the very top of the screen. Then you're going to scroll down to import export and go over to the side and go to import as a paint layer. Then you're going to click on that and it's going to give you options. So we just saved pony PNG right here. So we're going to open this up and you can see <laughs> I drew it on uh, in Mischief, so it's coming in quite a bit smaller because I actually have a defined canvas here, but that's no problem for us because we know how to resize it. So we're going to go over here to the side, make sure that that's the layer we're working with. Then we're going to use our editing tool right here to scale it up to size as large as we want it. There we go. And then we're happy with that. This is where I start to begin my sketching. Now normally I will take the background and I will just make it invisible right now because I don't want to see anything conflicting with what I am um, going to start penciling in here. So I'm going to take this layer up here that has our pony on it and I'm going to turn down the opacity. 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 I've heard it said both ways, but opacity. We're going to go with opacity because I'll get confused. Then I'm going to add another layer right on top of it now that it's just barely there so I can still see what I'm doing but I'm not too confused with whose lines are whose. I'm going to pick my very favorite brush right here for a line work and then I'm going to, usually I have it set on four with this canvas so it's just large enough um, but it's not overbearing. Then, as you guys have seen me do in my speed paint videos, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just begin my line work for this pony. I'm going to start sketching over my guidelines 
and filling out what I want the form to look like. And you can see too, another thing that's really, I love about this brush, it's, it's, that's really nice about it, is that it just gives you these really smooth lines with these tapered ends so you don't have to go back and erase anything if you don't like the way that it um, looks at the very end of the line. It kind of just tapers it off really nicely. So that's always been something I have found really cool. Um, especially working with line art, I am kind of paranoid uh, that it doesn't look right and then I'm a little bit OCD as well because then I will go back and redo it and redo it and redo it until I'm happy with it. But that is part of working on computers is you have the option to say edit undo or you can erase it and it doesn't affect your paper which I find is just amazing because I have many times ruined my piece of paper because I've erased so much because I wasn't happy with what I saw. <laughs> and then you get then you get problems. So basically this is just what I'm going to do. Um, obviously this maybe this form isn't <laughs> perfectly online but you can see um, kind of the process of this is how I start to do my lines, this is how I'm following what I sketched earlier. Um, and it takes time and you're going to change things up a little bit like I don't think that that's over far enough so you know I'm gonna just fix it a little bit and you can stray from your sketch um, as, as much as you want honestly but it's just giving you a baseline of something to kind of go off of as you create your final image so that is that also on the note of you can see how touchy Krita is because I just scrolled very lightly with my finger and it's already bringing me back out. But on the basis of erasing those mistakes, if you hit Command Z, and I know I mentioned this in text earlier, but I will show you how to do it right now. If you hit Command Z, it's going to take away your very last move. And it will continue to do that. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. I think you have about 10 or 12. I haven't actually counted. You've got a handful of... Um, edit deletes that you can use, otherwise it will stop allowing you to edit delete. So if you don't like something, delete it sooner rather than later. And then let's say I went, oh gosh, I deleted that, but I actually like it. I can go back up here to edit, redo. Now um, I was using the edit delete on my keyboard, which is command Z. And you can also use the keyboard shortcut for redo, but it's more keys than I'd like to hold down. So I just come up here, edit redo and it will bring my lines back as many as I have deleted. So guys, I hope this has been really helpful and informative. I know I'm a little bit scatterbrained with how I plan how to um, explain certain things or, or showcase certain features, but I hope this has given you a little bit of insight into how to use Krita on kind of like a basic level so you can start um, experimenting and trying new things and getting to learn this program. Now it is going to take time, just like with anything, to learn all the intricacies and to remember how to do certain things one after the other, but the more you practice using the program, the better you become at using it fluidly. And that was something that took me a little bit just because I'd never had a program like this, but after you do get to know it, everything becomes really easy, it's very user friendly, everything is in the same area, and the artwork that comes of it is so satisfying. So if you guys are new to Krita and you haven't used it yet, now is a great time to check it out and get creating. Be creative. You don't have to begin and be a master. Just get on and sketch or try out different brushes. Anything goes and everything is helpful to you to learn more and more and more about the program. And in no time, I promise you, you'll be a pro at it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. I by no means know everything about this program, as you can probably tell, but hopefully this has given you just enough to get you started. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and stay awesome.